Public health system is free in New Zealand. If you are a visitor from any nationality injured in New Zealand, you are covered. And guess what? It's not limited to car crash only. I know, I know, I know. What's important for you to know now is what is covered, what is not covered for you as a student, as a visitor, migrant worker. Let's find out more. Hi guys, Sassy Engineer here. In this video, I'll be sharing my insights and experiences with New Zealand healthcare system as an African, specifically as a Nigerian. You're gonna love this, trust me. New Zealand has a relatively high quality healthcare system because it is funded by, drum roll please, general taxation. This means it is free or subsidized for people who are eligible for publicly funded healthcare in New Zealand. Before I share my experiences with you, I'm going to give you the structure, what governs what, and a little bit of history of the New Zealand healthcare system. Here, the healthcare system is controlled by Ministry of Health, Maori name Manatu Horoa. I practiced that. They are the chief steward of the health system in New Zealand, and they focus on policy, strategy, and regulation. So simply put, the, their responsibilities include administering legislation and associated regulations. Before 2022, we used to have district health boards, aka DHBs. There were 20 of them that oversaw the day-to-day -day runnings of the public health system across New Zealand. But on July 1st, 2022, all that changed and was replaced with Health New Zealand, that is Te Fatuora and Maori Health Authority, that is Te Aka Fai Ora. I'm trying. These two work hand in hand. So this is what the map of the DHBs used to look like beginning from Northland down to Southland. All 20 DHBs were collapsed into four regional divisions from July 1 last year. The regions are Northland, Te Manawa Taki, which is the Midland region, Central, and Te Waipunamu, which means in Maori, South Island. So covers everything down South Island. This is what the map of the new four regional districts looks like. Technically, it is no longer new since it is now over a year old. So Health New Zealand Te Fatuora leads the planning and commissioning of services and functions of regional districts that I just mentioned, the four of them. Basically, they manage all the health services in hospitals, specialist services, primary and community care. So all the day-to-day -day running of health services across New Zealand is managed by Te Fatuora together with Te Akafayora. That's briefly of the history and structure of health system in New Zealand. Of course, this is all high level knowledge, okay? Public health in New Zealand is divided into three, but we really only interact with two. So the third is controlled by government. So things like general infectious disease outbreaks like COVID, you know, those instances. Primary and secondary healthcare are the two that we interact with most. Primary healthcare are things like family doctor or general practitioner, aka GP, dentist, pharmacist, midwives, emergency, etc. 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 You can access those ones directly and don't need to be referred there by another health provider, say your GP. So those ones are primary health care and it can be free or subsidized depending on your eligibility. Then you have secondary health care. This one is the one that you are referred to a more specialist level. Okay, for example, ENT specialist. So EA knows and throat where your GP will recommend you to them. You can't really access them directly. Well, you actually can, but that will be more of the private sector. For the public sector, you need to be referred to by um, a GP or your health provider. So this one is free in New Zealand public hospital and it is often by triage. So you may find out that you need it, but you don't get it because they don't deem you to be in the most urgent need for it. For instance, I needed ENT specialist, but after triage, I was deemed as not urgent enough. So not qualified to get the care at the time from the public hospital. I had to either wait Till when they deem my case urgent enough or they have you know free time or i go and pay hundreds of dollars for private services which is what i did i'll talk about that later okay this is when health insurance comes in and if you have the right health insurance in the first place because in the long run my health insurance didn't cover it and i had to pay cumulative of almost 500 dollars to get seen What's important for you to know now is what is covered, 
what is not covered for you as a student as a visitor migrant worker basically who is eligible for publicly funded healthcare in new zealand publicly funded healthcare includes inpatient and outpatient treatment at public hospital so that's like when you visit a gp subsidies on prescriptions disability support services hospital care if you have an accident fertility services and maternity care i'll be discussing them in this order and all of this is completely free to you or is subsidized if you are one of the following this is the list i was going to read all of them one by one but it is mouthful okay so feel free to pause this video and have a read regardless of if you qualify or not they still say being eligible doesn't mean that you are automatically entitled to receive a service because many of these services have their own criteria you will need to meet australia and uk citizens can have some aspect of their cake covered under what is called reciprocal agreement so yeah lucky them <laughs> no not everything okay so what happens if you are not eligible for publicly funded health services if you are not eligible which i wasn't when i first came to new zealand but you need health care they will still provide you with health care whether it is free or not depends on conditions that you will see later so that means if you are sick and you need to go to the hospital please go to the hospital they will still treat you they strongly recommend that you hold a health insurance for students if you are coming to study in new zealand this is mandatory and it will be quoted as part of your tuition fee so in your tuition fee schedule you will see health insurance as part of it you don't have to use uni gp you can enroll with gps outside uni but if you are an international student you must have an health insurance which means if you're a student and you somehow found out that getting a health insurance outside the uni recommended one is cheaper up to you to get it but you must have it it's part of your enrollment criteria when i started it was at least 300 dollars per year in the fee schedule it's it covered everything from doctor's appointment test to prescription it didn't cover immigration medicals though which i still found really weird and it didn't cover dental care <laughs> but at that time there were deals on groupon that we could use to get cheaper dental service now no more groupon for us so it's really sad we have to pay a lot to get our dental care let's take the publicly funded health care one by one beginning with the gp visit very fun i don't really understand the general practice bit because i am enrolled in a private clinic and i have health insurance that covers 75 percent of my gp visit and i don't visit gps very often so yeah i can't give you deep insights but what i read is that if you visit community clinics public hospitals their fees are subsidized by government to lower the cost if you have a community service card or high use health card you are tended to for free however if you have to visit another practice that is not the one that you are registered with or you don't hold a community service card then you will need to pay full cost or the subsidized cost depending on if you are eligible you will quickly realize that as an immigrant there is a high chance of not qualifying for the community service card because you earn a little too much so as an international student or someone coming to new zealand to work on a work visa one of the things you need to do as you're settling in new zealand activity is to enroll with a gp you will need your passport for that initial visit and after you enroll you'll be given a number known as the nhi number it is free okay this number is the number you will have for your whole life in new zealand all your medical records will be stored there and like i said there is no cost to you if your immigration status changes for instance it changed from student to resident or work visa whatever usually the record should change automatically but if it doesn't you go to your health professional to change it for you if you change address then you need to ask your health provider to update that too for you and this is usually in case of whatever emergency now how would you know if your immigration status has not been updated let's say if you are on a work visa and you go and they still ask you to pay full price for subscription those are the signs so check back a thing to note is dental care is not covered in new zealand and it is very 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 expensive a simple scale and polishing costs 200 dollars the only time you get dental care covered is if you are involved in an accident then ACC will cover it for you and you will know why soon. So when you go to the GP, if you want to get your case treated, 
to your satisfaction and this is a tip from experience you have to over dramatize your complaint okay especially us immigrants africans nigerians over dramatize it otherwise they'll just give you panadol they try they try they try ibuprofen it's crazy i noticed this right from uni and many people i talk to are saying the same thing and it's not just like africans generally so yeah i've only had like two gps that really get me like get get me so for instance if your tummy hurts don't just say oh my tummy hurts dramatize that pain <laughs> clench your tummy scream if you can okay you have to be very strategic with your drama though so that you are taken seriously next time use your hq and they google most things honestly right in your face they consult dr google <gasps> yeah the only difference between you and them asking dr google is they know how to differentiate the result for instance if you have fever and ask dr google it could say cancer you're going to die tomorrow but the doctor will know which particular fever it is you know those kind of things i remember <laughs> there's a story okay i remember when i went to the hospital to clinic uni back in uni because i had malaria malaria not malaria what am i saying <laughs> malaria like symptoms so i had fever but i was feeling cold you know that kind of thing so i went to the gp and i was like i'm having fever it's kind of like malaria because i knew at the mention of malaria ah they're gonna act the gp didn't have a clue the gp had to call a specialist who gave some questions to ask me to be sure it wasn't malaria then they just told me oh it's stress and gave me ibuprofen because when you're doing phd any small thing you have they will account it to stress that's why you have to act you know how to act your drama okay this is a tip let's talk about prescriptions before july 2023 that's july this year those eligible for publicly funded health care used to pay five dollars for standard prescription but now it's completely free 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 i like free things eh prescription from specialists is free if it is from public hospital specialist private and non-publicly funded prescribers still have a 15 dollar charge there is an extra discount if you have a community service card now once a person or a family reach 20 prescription items in a year they can get a prescription subsidy card which means they will not have to pay any prescription charges until 1st february the following year non-residents and visitors will pay in full so for you if you're a student an international student your health insurance will cover that cost but you will pay have to pay it first then make a claim to get it refunded to you that's how it's done i don't know if things are changed no i think that's still how it's done this ability the people in charge of disability support services are called faikaha meaning ministry of disabled people if you are looking for support because either you or someone you care for has a disability there are a number of ways you can get support from this ministry Fikaha gives support to people who have physical intellectual or sensory disability or all of the above so things like autism neurological conditions etc but you need to be under age 65 years to get their support services they will do a needs assessment service first to confirm if you qualify so the first thing you need to do is to visit the needs assessment service center because they don't cover everything some disability support services are covered by ministry of health some by acc and you can find the center closest to you by simply visiting the ministry of disabled people website accident accident acc is responsible for everything accident compensation in new zealand acc stands for accident compensation corporation but everyone in new zealand is covered by the no fault accidental injury compensation scheme if they've been injured in an accident if you are a visitor injured in new zealand you are covered this is not limited to car crash okay it can be falling and breaking your knee during exercise maternal birth injuries sexual abuse is definitely covered work accidents pain in the back due to sitting at work every time so need a chiropractor visit yep covered some mental injuries are also covered the injury must be because of an accident though so i sprained my hand during a cling and press in the gym <clears throat> because hashtag fit fam 
that was an accident and it was covered acc also covers dental injury but it is only the ones from accident spotting injury or a result of a medical or dental treatment the rest oyo or your is your case so i'm sure you're probably wondering where do they get all their money from these people have money Ooh. it is from you and from me aka taxpayers if you remember the video i made on tax and explain what deducted ACC was one of them. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. Don't forget to click the subscribe button to join the community and please like this video as well as if you have any question, ask in the comment section. Next up, pregnancy. Because it is commanded, be ye fruitful and multiply. New Zealand takes that seriously. So when you are pregnant, you get maternity care. Maternity care includes looking after you before your baby is born, during labor and birth, and after your baby is born. So all of this is long done than maternity care. You can choose who provides your maternity care. The common lead maternity carer for us in New Zealand is a midwife, but you can also choose a specialist doctor, AKA an obstetrician, if you want to, it's not compulsory. In some cases, you could get a GP who has um, been specially trained to care for pregnant women. But generally in New Zealand, the midwife is your primary maternity carer. Right from the moment you find out that you are pregnant, through to labor and birth, and four to six weeks after your baby is born, your midwife will deliver your baby in most cases, unless something happens, like maybe you need an emergency CS, then a specialist will come in. Other than that, midwife all the way, it will be just you, your husband, and midwife on the day you want to give birth. Nobody poking through your vagina just because they can. Your maternity services are free if you go with midwife. That is why most women in New Zealand go with the midwife. If you choose a specialist doctor, you would have to pay for your maternity care. If you opt for CAs, you would have to pay. But if it is emergency CAs, you may not pay. I'm not sure how that works. So who is eligible for publicly funded maternity services? Again, the same list. Tada, tada. I'm not going to read it out, but you will get free and subsidized maternity related services if either you or your partner are one of the following. <laughs> the thing you have to know though is that there may be charges for antenatal and childbirth education classes and some tests at private laboratories. There may also be charges for ultrasound scans, private obstetricians and private maternity hospital will also have a charge or charge you a fee. So it all depends, but you will know all of this when you register and start your classes. HIV infected pregnant women have free access to certain maternity services, regardless of their citizenship or immigration status. There are a lot of information that you can get. So visit the Te Fatora website for more information. Now, if you are eligible and your GP refers you to um, some way that is not free tell them to refer you to the one that is free if you are not eligible you would have to pay the full cost of pregnancy and labor and birth a minimum of nine thousand new zealand dollars to cover your health and medical costs is needed to show that you can pay for it something to note though is if you are a student and you take maternity leave and the period is longer than three months your visa may be cancelled and you would have to apply for a new visa to return to new zealand so that's just something to keep in mind. You can get more information online on IRD, INZ, Tefator, and they all have information on pregnancy. Simply Google what happens if I'm pregnant in New Zealand. So in summary, if you are not eligible for publicly funded healthcare, you can only get free service if your condition is as a result of an accident. The cost of your care will be covered by ACC. Meaning, if you are an overseas visitor or on a student visa and you have an accident, it can be covered by ACC. But ACC needs to accept to cover the cost first. That's why it's always advisable that you come with the health insurance if you are visiting. You can also be eligible for free care if you have been admitted to hospital under compulsory treatment order. I think something I had to do with tuberculosis, alcoholism, drugs, mental health, stuff like that. From my experience with New Zealand healthcare, I have a love-hate relationship with it, okay? Because things I want, I'm either not eligible for it or it's not covered by insurance or free healthcare. 
but overall i'm super happy for the healthcare system in new zealand because it's better than places like let's say us honestly us i mean i'm not saying that doctors are not good at nurses what i'm saying is the system okay don't misquote me i hear it's very 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 crazy over there in new zealand you don't need to have health insurance if you are a worker on a work visa what health insurance will do for you will just be to get you that secondary health care when you need it instead of having to wait for triage system to find you worthy <laughs> those things are usually fully booked too and they have long queues so hence the triage you'll be lucky if someone cancels for instance mri costs 1600 dollars if you go to a private lab but with public hospital it is free ent specialists are free in public hospital but in private we are talking hundreds of dollars dental care is not covered sha. <laughs> it really helps because you can just you know get things free unlike i'm hearing in some places you need to have a health insurance otherwise even as a citizen you will pay millions but here if you're a citizen you can walk into a public hospital and get free primary health care free secondary health care but then like i said triage will come into place with the secondary health care or, or when you have to meet specialists and so you have to wait in long queues that's why they still have us able to have insurance so you don't have to wait forever you know especially those that have all those terminal diseases and all that it just gives you access to the private sector and takes away some of the burden but you can be lucky someone cancels and a slot appears so yeah like i said in terms of my experience with new zealand healthcare system it's a love-hate relationship mostly on the love side but occasionally we have our fight <laughs> <laughs> um when i came to new zealand i of course had to have a health insurance i had to enroll with uni what people did not know is that as an Auckland uni student you had free eye checkup every year free they check everything comprehensive and the good thing with that is they're not selling glasses to you so they're not checking so that they can sell glasses to you like some of these people do you know they want to find faults and strongly recommend you buy glasses they were doing comprehensive eye tests everything eye pressure eye shape good so we had that as students and people did not know that but we took advantage of that for us it was in um medical school i even have a friend that got his glasses for 60 dollars 60 dollars glasses that i got prescription glasses for almost 700 dollars he got it for 60 dollars ah, i should have gone to spec savers you know the funny thing that's exactly the habit should have gone to spec savers because my friend was telling me that i could have gotten half that price for the same glasses so that's the only thing the eye services here well the good thing is that i still claimed it back from insurance although it wasn't even up to half the price but it was about like 45 percent i don't know why that one wasn't 75 percent but actually i still got some money from it but it was paying I miss those uni days where you get free things. I have not really used the eye care services, but I know dental care very, very well. And I know that one is not covered by anything. Insurance, you have to get special insurance package. Um, government, no cover arm. But like I said, they're talking about beginning to cover it. Even then, it will not see here people like us. Root canal is like 1,500, if not 2,000 to get. Crown is one five or one two. Just come on scaling and polishing, two hundred dollars. Yeah, still there are good ones though. That's still good. General GP. I have not been to any. Um, like I said, I haven't been to any common public one, so I can't really say much. Emergency service here is really handled by St John's. St John's is in charge of all the ambulances and everything you see around St John's. St John's. And I don't know of anyone that has had to use it that is a resident or citizen the only person i knew that either was my flatmate then and he wasn't a resident by that time so he had to pay money when you call out you pay but they try they still try them yeah so basically it's really it's good the only issue that i've seen that resonates with everyone is just that um, visit to gps where sometimes they don't take your case seriously because they think i don't know you are being over dramatic or is not serious so that was the case that we saw especially amongst the students community which are most of the international students and people i talked to they were just like hey you go you get ibuprofen 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 but there are some doctors that are actually really good so like i said 
over dramatize your issue but strategically so that they will not really test or insist insist you do a test for instance i know my body to some extent so i know when something hurts so i always insist you have to niger they would make you do tests do tests let us see what's wrong with you but i don't know why they were avoiding to send to do tests so stuff like that yeah speaking of tests most tests if you are referred by your gp is covered if you randomly walk to the laboratory to do a test that one you pay for it now <laughs> but in uni as a student you had to go do the test that you were referred to do pay for it with your money and claim it and insurance will pay you 100 percent so yeah